Loading windows in the terminal. What are they? Are they useful? Are they just a waste of time? Do they serve any purpose? Are they just a cosmetic thing? The other day, I was watching a video by Tony, by the way, and um, he was using the menu in that video. And I was like, I want that because it seemed useful. It seemed functional. He brought it up and used it to execute scripts or to open his bookmarks in different browsers. A lot of cool stuff. So I said, okay, I'm going to implement it in macOS. But then I realized that that is only available in Linux. And that is only available for X. I don't know what that means, but that's what it says in the documentation. But doesn't matter. It's not available on macOS, so it's not useful for me because I'm on macOS. So what can I do then to have a pop-up that shows up some of the scripts that I execute all the time? And is this pop-up even worth it or not? So in this video, we're going to explore all of that. I'm going to show you how I set it up, the tools that I use, and um, everything that you need to set it up on your side as well. First of all, let me just play a song so that we can get started. I'm going to create a playlist out of this song, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, by Starship, just like your prompt on the terminal, okay? What else do we have here? Some white snake. Oh, if you know this song, you're a man of culture. Yeah, just good stuff here. Just the stuff that I listen to all the time. So, let's play this and let's switch here to my terminal. So, what is my terminal to start with? If you can see on the top left corner, you're going to see that it's Kitty. Okay, that's the one that I'm using. I was in Ghosty before, long story. I ended up in Kitty. You're going to know why in a little while. The operating system that I use is Mac OS. I know, based. I don't have any plans to switch to Linux anytime soon. But this is also available on Linux, so no problem there at all. Let me give you a quick demo on how this works, okay? I'm in my daily note here, but let's say that I switch to another project, okay? Let's say that I switch to my dot .files, which are here. And let's say that I need to execute a script, okay? Just to give you an example. I'm going to type some keys here. In my case, S. Just going to type the letter S. I have it pressed, and I'm going to type the letter T as in task or something. And um, let's execute one of these. Okay, I searched there. I'm going to execute this so we can see if it works or not. And no, that doesn't work. You didn't see the notification because Mac OS, when it detects that you're recording something, for security reasons, just disables notifications. You can change that, but I like it that way. So that was not a good example. But let's try something else. I'm going to do the same thing. ST. Notice the menu that shows up there, the pop-up that shows up there. And let's say that I want to run any of the scripts that I have here. Let's say that I want to run this um, generate links, for example, right? So it asks me just a few questions. I can generate a lot of stuff using this. So yeah, that works. I'm going to exit out of this. Notice that's inside NeoVim right now. So I'm just going to do Control C or I can hide it. I'm going to type the same key map right now, ST, and it's just going to hide it. If I type it again, shows it, hides it, you know, so it's just basically a toggle, right? Just going to do Control C to quit out of this or no, quit without saving. That's what I want to do. Okay, now let's bring it up again, ST. And um, what if I want to set up OBS, okay? I type this one, and I can select one of the options, and this is going to set up the OBS the way that I need to set it up, depending on the occasion. Just going to do Control c to exit out of this. And like that, you can run any script that you need from here. I'm going to show you how I do it in a little while as well. Let's try with a different one. I'm going to bring this up again, and let's say that I bring this up, set up OBS. I have a file here that I can use to set up my OBS, all of the scenes and all that stuff. So, you know, works fine. I retested it and um, it's just wonderful. Let's say that I want to bring up a different one, a different menu. Okay. Notice what's going to happen here. I'm going to press a different key S here and I'm going to type the letter G. And that is a completely different script 
This is to change my color scheme everywhere in Mac OS. Okay, any of them, the bar on the top, everywhere. Okay, so I can do that as well. And notice that it's a different key map, different script. Okay, notice something else as well. I toggle it the same way, same key. SG brings it up, SG hides it again. Okay, now take a look at this other one. I'm gonna type S and the letter J here on my right hand. Okay, notice what shows up at the top of the screen. This is something that I noticed in Ghosty. There was something similar there. So I can list the files here. For example, I can take a look at the file. I can send a command or something. And when I want to hide this, I do the same thing, SJ, and it just hides it, okay? Let's say that I'm in a different application. Let's say that I'm here and I type SJ, it's going to bring it up, okay? And I can hide it as well. Notice that the history remains there. What if I go to a different directory? I list the files that I have here and I can hide it, right? So pretty useful. It's just a toggle that you can have there in case that you need to quickly type some commands, verify something, run scripts, a lot of different stuff. You're going to notice that the shape changes, okay? Notice that this is just um, in the center of the screen, but this other one is at the very top and it occupies like half of the screen, we could say. You can customize that and I'm going to show you how to do that in a little while as well. So what do I do with this? Basically run scripts. This is the one that I use the most. Okay. So I don't want to go to my terminal. Let's say that I don't want to go here and execute the script. No, I just bring this up here, call the script and I hide it and that's it. Pretty useful. It's not just a cosmetic thing, but it actually serves a purpose in my workflow. Now I already explained why not the menu. And the reason for that is because that's only available on Linux. I'm not on Linux, so that basically covers this. If you're on Mac OS, there's other tools like this Choose. If I go to this GX, you're going to notice in the repo that it says Fuzzy Matcher for Mac OS X. Okay. And if we scroll down here, you're going to see the way that the menu looks pretty cool. Let's see. Look at this. You can execute scripts there. I guess you can do way more stuff from here. But yeah, notice that it piped ls to choose and it shows all the files in the menu. Pretty neat, actually. And um, here's the installation and all that stuff. And it's maintained. The last release was February 8th, but there's commits here. So it seems that it's an active tool. So why not something like this then? I thought about it, but why do I want to install an additional tool when I can use something that is already built into my terminal? Okay, I didn't know that this was an option in Kitty, so I did a little bit of research, found the information, set it up. So that's why I'm going to show you how to set up in the video as well. So this choose tool seems like a great option, but I just don't want to install an additional tool. I just want to use the terminal and that's it. Now look at the point below. What if I move to another terminal? What if I leave Kitty behind and I move to Western or if I move back to Ghosty or something? That's going to be a problem there because I don't know if Western offers these pop-ups or if Ghosty offers them. In that case, using the tool choose could be a better option. So you have the same experience. It doesn't matter what terminal you're on. But for the time being, I'm going to stick to Kitty. So I will use the functionality that it provides. But yeah, just keep that in mind. If you don't want to marry to a terminal, we could say, okay. Now, how did I do this in the past? I did it with Tmux before, okay. I was using Ghosty. I was using Tmux, so I would bring up the same FCF menu, but in a new Tmux window on the right hand side. I don't have the key maps configured anymore, so I cannot demo it. But if you go and watch my previous videos, you'll see that show up a lot of times. I like this approach better now. And that also raises the question, why not Tmux floating pop-ups? And um, I moved away from Tmux a couple months ago. I released a video. I'm going to leave it in the video description in which I explain all the reasons. 
and uh, how I migrated all my stuff from Tmux to Kitty. So go and check that out and you're going to understand way better in that video. So now let me show you how to set that up. Okay, we covered this and uh, this as well, this and this. I think I don't have any other tasks um, that I can remember right now, but let me show you. Let me go to my dot files here. I'm gonna open my kitty configuration file. I was there. And you're gonna notice a section here in this file. Where is it? Uh, quick, I think it says, yeah. Quick access terminal. So here's a link to the documentation. Let me go there real quick. And here, just read and you'll be able to go through it. Notice that you can use this command, kitten quick access terminal, okay? That is gonna bring up what you see on the screen at the very top, okay? If you run the command again, notice that it says here that it will be hidden. If you want to make it appear and disappear at a key press, instructions for Linux and Mac OS. This is the one that I'm following. I'm not doing this. This is a wonderful option and it works fine, but I rather do this from my keyboard mapper directly, which is Canada. And I'll show you how I do that and uh, where you can find that. Okay. But if you follow these instructions and you set this up, you will be able to bring it up with a keyboard shortcut. Here is the configuration and that is something that we will go over in the terminal. But here's all the different options that you can configure. Okay. So, Let's jump to my terminal and you're going to notice that I have three different key maps. Okay. So this one, kitty mod a kitty mod in my case, in case that you don't know is command option. These two keys look where my fingers are command option. So if I type command option, I have them pressed and I type the letter a and then I type the letter D it brings it up. Command option A, D, that is way inconvenient. That doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to explain why I do that in a little while. Just keep that in mind. Or you know what? Let's take a look at that. Okay. So from my keyboard mapper, I called this command option A and then the letter D. Okay. So let's switch to my Canada configuration, which is my keyboard mapper. And let's search for quick here quick access terminal. Okay. So take a look at this macro here. Okay. Command option A D and we see that here option command, which is alt meta A and then a delay and then the letter D, which is what is precisely here. So I press that from Canada. First, I focus my terminal kitty. Then I press that and that is what allows me to bring it up pretty easily. Okay. So if I type S J brings it up, if I type S J again, it hides it, right? So pretty simple. I have to leave S pressed. Okay. There S is pressed J show up hide. Okay. Where do I call this? So if we search for this, where is it here? Let me unwrap this here in this layer system layer. And that is bound to the letter S. Okay. So this is how I bring it up. Here's the other one S task. So that's when I press S T brings this up or this color one S G and I hide it the exact same way. Okay. So this is my keyboard mapper Canada. If you don't know what it is, it's a um, pretty neat tool cross platform. You can use it on Mac OS, Linux, even windows. Let me show you real quick. So and uh, I have a lot of videos about it. So just go and check it out. I even have this video that I did with um, Sylvan Franklin a few days ago. You can go and check it out as well. We went over the Canada installation. It's troubleshooting, which just wasted a lot of time. Didn't achieve much, but it explains what Canada is. So let's go back to the kitty configuration file. Now that you know how I call these. Okay, this is one. This is the other one. And this is the other one. Okay. So notice the type is set to background. Here's where I call the kitten quick access terminal. I specified this config file. Okay. So notice this terminal center .conf. This is what makes it show up in the center and not in the entire screen. Okay. 
instance group system task okay notice that the system group or the instance group down here is different is color scheme selector and why because if you go to the documentation and you look for let's see command f no command f instance group here the unique name of this quick access terminal use a different name if you want multiple such terminals the default one is quick access so this is in the documentation if you go and read it you're going to understand all of what's going on and then i execute this bash command which is my script basically right just point to my script and this is the other script so that's basically what you have to do just point to your script from one of these and uh, that's basically it what are these scripts if i go here gf is gonna take me to it and it's just an fcf menu basically right so here is where the script is at where is it no, 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 no. here here look at this this is what shows up type or move using arrows and select the script to execute here's schemes and schemes is just the list of the available scripts okay so if i bring it up again you'll be able to see select the script to execute and type or move using the arrows and the list of the scripts so if you don't understand any of this just copy and paste it in chat gpt or something and vibe code something but you'll be able to figure it out so let's go back Control o what else do i need to show you here well that's basically it that basically covers everything so this has been an amazing discovery for me it's pretty useful i didn't know that it was an option but yep i'm enjoying it so far the last thing that i want to do is thank the ceos web23 web23.com i also want to thank the youtube members that's what keeps the channel going so thanks to each and every one of you if you don't want to become a member, if you don't want to donate, or if you cannot do it, that's fine. If you want to support me, just remember that you can go and like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel as well. And remember that all of the interviews that I record with other guests are available as podcasts as well. Also, let me know down in the comments, what tool do you use for this? What are your thoughts in all this? I hope you learned something. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.